So we're about to go rescue my girlfriend's car because it blew a radiator hose. Uh, I just finished doing a ton of repairs on it two days ago. So it's kind of unfortunate, but I don't want to have to pay for a tow truck or have her pay for one. So we're going to go do the repairs and uh, I'll show you. I'm also going to add a screen uh, from the repair manual that I use uh, just so if anyone wants is interested in seeing it you can uh, take a look at it and I'll put it up right now and you can just pause it so for this you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench or ratchet uh, I used a 5 16 ratchet but that's because the hose clamps that I put on there uh, are a different than the stock spring clamps. I used an extension for a 3 8 that's just another extension for a quarter inch, flat blade screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and these are just an angled pair of needle nose pliers. Light would be helpful. Uh, I used antifreeze. I buy the concentrated antifreeze and then I dilute it myself because concentrated antifreeze that was $14 for the one gallon and then I bought a gallon of distilled water for $2 so I got two jugs two gallons of 50 50 antifreeze for $16 which is the same price that a one jug of 50 50 antifreeze is normally. so those are the tools you'll need if you want to do the job So here is what happened today. This radiator hose right here done blew up. Done blowed up. And shot antifreeze all over the engine. Um, pretty much everywhere. Uh, I just finished replacing the battery and Took the intake off and installed this PCB bypass kit. Uh, it's here, it goes all the way back there. And has a check valve in the back. And then adds into the vacuum lines here for, I believe that's the fuel eva evap canister, evap line. Um, under vacuum there. So. This hose they don't actually make at Advance Auto. They don't make it at CarQuest either. They only had it at Napa. And this is the part number, if anyone's interested. Uh, it's $20, and I would have done this earlier, but the only place I had in stock was an hour away, so I had to go get it. So you have to remove this bolt. It is a 10 millimeter. And this bolt. Remove this. It's just a little clip that holds it in place. And this pops up. Gotta remove this. And then you gotta remove this hose clamp. I've already replaced this one with a different screw style hose clamp versus the spring clamps because I don't have the tool for spring clamps and I hate them. Once the hose clamp is loo loose you can go ahead and break the seal loose and work it off. Now this doesn't have antifreeze in it because it already blew everywhere so I don't have to drain it but normally you would have to if you were disconnecting this hose. I'm assuming yeah there's a tear inside and the I'm guessing webbing gave away. Not sure, but not not looking good, my friend. And then the other hose is here. This is a spring clamp. I don't have pliers for it, so I just need to work it off with normal pliers. Spring clamps are the bane of my existence. Yeah, 
and you just kind of ram the spring clamp off however you can. Because there you go. So you can see the top part here is just a tear. Now the other or older um, housing, this here, this outlet housing, this whole piece, this is the third time I've replaced it because it's a piece of crap. So this piece here, I've replaced it two times on my own and my girlfriend has replaced it once at the shop. So last time, every time we replace it, it's either cracked or collapsed, the plastic and uh, it causes a giant coolant leak. Obviously not as bad as a hose rupture, but uh, yeah, this is a bad engineered design. So this end is square, and this end, not so square. Uh, that came from the factory like that, but I'm going to trim it and try to make it more square in a little bit. I don't know how well it'll work, but we'll try. This is our only hose. We'll have to drive another hour to get another one. Sorry, hour each way. That's looking a little better. We'll go with that. And when you put it in, you gotta put this end in first and then wiggle that end on and make sure your hose clamps are actually on it and facing the way that you can actually get to them to tighten. So in this car, the oil filter is right here. I don't want to leave this hose clamp in the way if I'm, you know, changing the oil or anything. So I'm actually going to flip this hose clamp around. Back to the way I had it. Thought I was, you know, having a good idea, but apparently it didn't, didn't matter because I already had a better idea. Make sure the hose clamp, hose clamp is snug, but not too tight because it's just on plastic. Tighten up the hose clamp on the other end. So this thing has a little bracket here that fits on this little L. Just like that and holds it in place. Put your two 10 millimeter bolts back in, holding it in place. Make sure they're just snug, they're just going in the plastic. And then replace your line here. Make sure the safety clip is in place and it's locked in because it will blow off if you don't have it locked into place. Go ahead and fill your reservoir. Don't worry, this is a closed course where no contaminants can get anywhere other than into our certified disposal containers. You're gonna wanna squeeze your new hose to get the air bubbles out. Now, I mean, if you had a coolant bleeding system, you could use that, but, you know, we're on the side of the road because the radiator hose blew out and I'm not trying to spend money on a tow truck. So, doing this will get some of the air out. Make sure you fill up your reservoir. I overfilled it a little bit because I know that there's air in the system. And it'll work its way out. 
And then once you double check everything, make sure everything's good and hooked back up, you can go ahead and start it.